is the announcement we get every morning at 10 o'clock reminding us that we are in a state of emergency here in Tokyo. It's announced in both Japanese and English, but there are so many buildings that echo so much it's hard to understand. I live smack in the middle of Tokyo, near the Tokyo Tower, and here are some clips of both my very early morning or late night walks in order to maintain social distancing. Overall, Japan has relatively lower cases at 13,000 and deaths at 334 of COVID-19. Tokyo at this time has 3,836 cases with over 100 deaths. In early April, Prime Minister Abe declared a state of emergency, which would extend through the end of Golden Week, which is the most popular time to travel in Japan. This state of emergency lacks enforcement and is mainly a political and bureaucratic tool. As a quick aside, Tokyo has a huge number of outdoor escalators. Here I'm going down a set of four to get to the train station. When they're not being used, they're off and then they start up when you get on them. He had hoped to reduce public contact by 80%. Tokyo has managed 70%, but the rest of the country has only managed about 30 or 40%. A lot of stores are still open during working hours, and restaurants need to close by 8 o'clock, though many of them are closed or takeout only. And public transportation is running as normal, though during non-rush hours it's not very crowded, as you can see here. Stores that cater to an international crowd are a little more strict. As you can see here, people are social distancing for this grocery store. This grocery store has extended spacing while waiting in line. They sanitize their grocery carts and you're required to wear a mask before you enter and only 20 people are allowed to enter at a time. There are no such restrictions in the other grocery stores that I go to. People always ask me, with such loose rules, why Japan has such a low rate of infection. It could be partially that Prime Minister Abe closed schools very early on, back in March 2nd, which really surprised a lot of people. It could be that Japan has a culture of wearing masks, and most people do wear masks during the wintertime. Or it could be that you take your shoes off before you go into a home. You use the word agaru to go into someone's home. You step up into their home after you take off your shoes. So there's a real distinct inside and outside division. Or it could be that the Japanese people are very healthy and eat nutritious foods like natto and kimchi. Or it could be with their small number of testing that they really don't know how many people really are infected and the bigger numbers are coming but the numbers are still on an upward trend. Like every other place on the planet, Japan's economy is suffering. All this puts one in a pretty blue mood. One of the most important things you can do is keep your head straight, and I use fountain pens to help me with that. Here are some things that I've been trying. I thought I could convince my daughter's very old dog to play fetch with my Kasama Una. It's a tough pen and I figured it could take it, but she wasn't having any of it. She thought it tasted pretty good though. I've been seeing all over the internet that this is the time to organize my ink collection. So I'm gonna gather up all the bottles, some in this plastic drawer, and some more in this plastic drawer some in this pen box, some in some various baskets, some in this drawer, oh, another basket, some in these cigar boxes, my camera bag, my 30 millimeter, my macro, and a bottle of ink. And under that, there's a box and a bag, and it's got ink. All this looking makes me want to have a snack and some ink. I think I'm going to pass on this ink organizing thing. 
Okay, so if I don't organize my ink, maybe I'll just catalog all my ink. Here's a little cool ink journal. It's really tiny, and so it should be able to be doable. It's got a little piece of uh, blotting paper that comes with it. And then I can uh, put the ink color maybe in the bottle part. Maybe write some letters and some notes in there. Oh, seriously, who am I kidding? This is Mita San Shodo's Hakka Blue Black. And this is pretty much, well, how I log my inks. I just take this beautiful Musubi notebook and splatter ink on it and then write down what the ink is. It's simple and straightforward and it works for me. Okay, yeah, none of this seems to be working. Okay, I'm going to sit around for a little while and try to think of a way that you can glitter up a sailor pen that they haven't done yet. This may take a while because I don't think there's any kind of glitter that they haven't used. So I'll just go back to my standard game of fantasy fountain pen. How do you play fantasy fountain pen? Well, let me explain. You get $5,000. That's the fantasy part. You have to buy five pens. That way you're not buying like 2,000 varsities or whatever. You can't repeat a pen like buying three different colors of a Profonte or something. Your pens must be a listed price online, so you can have an aftermarket pen, but it must have a listed price. To make it even for everyone, shipping nor taxes count since it's all different. The pen must be in stock currently somewhere. The goal is to get pens you actually want up to but not past $5,000. So my first pen would be from nibs.com, this Nakaya Dragonflies with a flex stub nib at $4,120. Next up would be Pensachi's Sailor Pro Gear Astro Boy Fountain Pen at $650. Those two pens would bring my current total to $4,770. Next up from Goulet Pens is a Pilot Custom 74 in teal. This counts even though I have a black um, custom 74. This teal color got released later. Now that's three pens at $49.30. My fourth pen is from Shigure Inks. It's the aftermarket Deco Kakuno in the Goldfish for $55. This is now four pens at $49.85. And to top it all off, a Platinum Plazer from Jet Pens at $14.25. This brings my total to $49.99.25 for the five pens. One more round because I like this pen better, the Mont Blanc Agatha Christie at $3,750. The Golden Ginkgo from 18111.com for $450. From Willow Strong Pens, the Conklin Crescent Ring Top Wet Noodle for $329.99. The Yume Zakada from Pen House for a dollar equivalent of $155.59. And the Pilot Justice for $312. My total came out to be $4,996.59. Though that total didn't come as close to $5,000 as the first set, I like this second set of pens better. I'm curious to see what your combinations are. I'll print the rules down in the description box and in the comments give me your set of five pens for Fantasy Fountain Pen. And for those of you that want to play a game where there's some actual consequences, let's play Name That Pen and it's not what you think it is. You need an accomplice for this game. Have your accomplice pick at least 10 of your pens. While you're not in the room, have your accomplice line up these pens, preferably numbered over the top. You enter the room blindfolded and sit in front of the pens. Your accomplice starts timing. You pick up your first pen, it may be any random pen, and you have 10 seconds to feel it, and then you've got to name that pen. If you can't name it correctly, then you haven't been using that pen enough, so you have to sell it. It sounds extreme, but you will probably more than likely guess all of your pens correctly unless you have some models that are really similar and you haven't used them in a long time. In which case, well, yes, yeah, sell your pen. It's a great way to cull your collection. 
If you want to play an advanced level of this game, only give yourself five seconds to identify your pen. This one always gives me a problem. I don't know why. I can't remember that I have it. My problem lots of times is I remember the pen. I know what pen it is, but I just can't remember the name. Thanks for checking out some of the things I do in Shelter in Place here in Tokyo. This ink is Tono and Limbs Opal. I like the way it looks on black paper. Next week, I'll be talking about collecting. Thank you.